Hi everyone, it's Lila with Miss Kiss Creations. Welcome back to my channel. Today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how I created this Halloween themed crackle tumbler. Like always, all of my materials will be listed in my description below, including some links and coupon codes. And don't forget, you can find me on Facebook, TikTok, and Instagram for more Tumblr creations. And with all that being said, let's go ahead and get started on this tutorial. I'm starting with a 20 ounce stainless steel tumbler. I have it already prepped and I spray painted with a black spray paint. I'm now removing the paint inside of my tumbler and then I'm going to add some glitters to the tumbler. The glitters I'll be using are all from Glitter Heart Co. I mix Black Beauty, Deja Vu, and Mysterious together. I try to mix them in even amounts, but I just have a heavy hand, so I just dumped whatever colors inside of a Dixie cup, and then I mixed all the colors together. I wanted a black or a darker base glitter, and I still wanted some purple and some bright colors peeking through, so I thought I'd make a little custom mix. I tried to just make enough for the one tumbler, but I made a little bit too much, which is okay. I was able to use that on other projects. Once all of my glitter was mixed, I then went in with my Mod Podge and I'm applying my glitter using my Mod Podge brush. This can be found on my Amazon storefront, which is linked in my description below. I'm applying the Mod Podge all around my tumbler. I'm trying to have that Mod Podge be added to the tumbler as evenly as possible and trying not to clump it up a lot. Right after I applied that Mod Podge, I went right in with my glitter. You'll see since I did make a custom mix, I had to add that glitter to the tumbler and then put that glitter back into the Dixie cup and then back onto the tumbler over and over again. I eventually lost patience because I have very little and I just added more glitter into the tumbler or into the cup for the tumbler and so I had even more glitter. <laughs> You do not have to use the Mod Podge method to apply your glitter. I just like using this method because it works best for me. You can always use the epoxy method as well. And once my tumbler was completely covered with my glitter, I let my tumbler sit about 20 to 25 minutes and I allowed that Mod Podge to dry underneath the glitter. Depending on how thick your Mod Podge is, is how long your Mod Podge and tumbler is going to take to dry. So keep that in mind with your drying time. And once this tumbler was dry, I took my parchment paper, since there was some chunky glitter on my tumbler, and I pressed down on my parchment paper, making sure to really seal in that glitter. So I wanna make sure that glitter is really stuck to that tumbler and allows all those glitters to lay flat on the tumbler. I'm doing this because when I go to epoxy, this is going to help me with having a very smooth tumbler. So this is pressing down all those glitters on that tumbler. Once I'm finished doing that, I'm taking my tumbler outside and I'm spraying it with this Krylon Crystal Clear acrylic coating. I spread about one to two coats. I let that dry for about 15 to 20 minutes. And then I went into epoxy in my tumbler. I'm using a total of 30 milliliters of epoxy. That's 15 milliliters part A and 15 milliliters part B totaling 30 milliliters of epoxy. I made sure to epoxy more than I had to because there was some chunky glitter with this mix. So you wanna make sure you're giving a fully covered tumbler. If you happen to not mix enough epoxy, let your epoxy and your tumbler spit on the, on the cup turner, and then you can always do another coat of epoxy. But make sure before moving on to the next step, you have a smooth tumbler as what you see here. And once my epoxy was cured on my tumbler, it took about two to three hours. I did use the fast set epoxy, again linked in my description. I took an X-Acto knife and I cut all the edges around my tumbler. I do this after every time I epoxy my tumbler, just to remove any excess epoxy. And then I took a 180 grit sanding block and I sanded the rim of the tumbler and then I sanded around the tumbler lightly. Remember that if you do press down on your sanding block really hard, you're going to sand away that glitter. So make sure you're pressing down very lightly with your sanding block while sanding your tumbler. 
Once I finished sanding my tumbler, I then wiped it down with 91% alcohol, removing any excess oils or sanding dust that may have been placed onto my tumbler. And now to make the crackle effect, I am using Elmer's glue. I'm just using the regular white Elmer's glue. I've heard that the clear does work, but I have not used it myself. So all you're doing is adding that Elmer's glue onto your tumbler and then you're painting it on with a brush. I am using a sponge brush, but I have used a regular brush in the past. So if you don't have a sponge brush, brush that is okay. Now the key to doing this is adding a lot of your Elmer's glue onto your tumbler. You could see that I'm adding a lot around the tumbler because you want a thick coat of Elmer's glue. We're going to allow that to dry halfway and then we're going to add some acrylic paint over that. So like I said, the key to this is adding a lot of Elmer's glue, letting it dry halfway, and then adding a little bit of acrylic paint. To help my tumbler dry, I used my heat gun. I did use it on the high setting and I went very quickly around my tumbler to help that drying process. Again, you only want your Elmer's glue to dry halfway. You don't want it to dry completely and you don't want it to be super wet on your tumbler. And then I'm going in with my acrylic paint. It does not matter the finish of acrylic paint that you are using or the brand. I am using white matte and I'm going in with my one inch paintbrush and I'm starting from the top of the tumbler and going all the way down. I am not doing small strokes. I am doing one long stroke from the top to the bottom and the bottom to the top. Again, remember you have that thick coat of Elmer's glue on the bottom that's halfway dry. And then I go back in and I remove some of that paint. So you want a thick coat of Elmer's glue and then you want a thin coat of the paint. So you'll see that I added all the paint and then I'm going in and I'm trying to scrape away some of that paint and remove some. And you'll see that I even grab a paper towel to wipe off my paintbrush and then go back in to remove some paint. No matter what I'm doing, if I'm removing it or adding the paint, I'm starting from one end of the tumbler and I'm painting all the way up to the top. I am not picking up my paintbrush at all. I'm doing one long brush stroke and making sure I'm starting from one end to the next. Once I'm finished with applying all of my paint to my tumbler, I then went in with my heat gun again on the high setting and I'm going around very quickly and I'm heating up that paint and glue. This is what's going to create that crackle effect. You wanna make sure you are doing this very quickly because if you allow your heat gun to stay in one spot of your tumbler, it's going to cause your tumbler to bubble and you don't want your tumbler to bubble, you want it to crack. So make sure you're just fanning across your heat gun, across your tumbler over and over again in different spots and moving as quickly as you can until you get the desired crackle effect look. And once I was satisfied with my crackle effect, I then went in with some 91% alcohol and some paper towels, and I removed some of that paint and Elmer's glue. Uh, a little pro tip with this is make sure that your paint and Elmer's glue is completely dry, especially your glue, because whenever you try to remove that Elmer's glue, if it's still wet, it gets slimy and it doesn't really remove well and it gets really sticky. So just make sure your tumbler is completely dry before you move on to doing this step. I wanted to have a crackle tumbler, but I also wanted that glitter to peek through. So this is why I'm doing the distress look. Like I always tell y'all, these tumblers are just for y'all to use for inspiration. So make your tumbler whichever way you wanna make it, and I'm sure it'll be beautiful. Once I was satisfied with the distress look, I then went in with my heat gun one more time because I wanted to make sure my tumbler was completely dried until moving on to epoxy in my tumbler. Thank you. 
And now to epoxy my tumbler, I use a total of 10 milliliters of epoxy. That's five milliliters part A and five milliliters part B. The reason for this epoxy step is just to seal in that design. So I wanted as little as epoxy as I could because we are going to add a decal and water slide over this epoxy. So make sure your epoxy is completely cured before adding your decals and water slide. And now that my tumbler's epoxy is completely cured, let's go ahead and make this spooktacular. So first I'm going to take my X-Acto knife again and trim away any of that excess epoxy and paint that may have been placed on the rim. And then I'm going to take my 180 grit sanding block and then sand away that rim one more time and then sand around my tumbler, sanding away any of those stubborn areas or little areas that may have been uh, bubbled or anything during the epoxy process. Once I finished sanding, I then went in with my 91% alcohol again, and then I wiped away any of that excess oil or sanding dust that may have been placed on the tumbler. I found this really cute file from Creative Fabrica. I'll have it linked in my description below. I printed this file on my water slide decal paper that I have been using for years. It is posted in my description in my Amazon storefront link. Once I print out my file, I then let it sit for about five to 10 minutes, letting the ink dry. I then spray it with one coat of this Plasti Dip. This is the clear Plasti Dip. Once I spray it with that, I let that sit for about 10 minutes to dry. And then I spray it with this Rust-Oleum Matte Clear Enamel. It does not have to be matte. It's just the one I have on hand. It can be gloss. Then I let that dry. Once I do that, I then have my water slide ready to be placed on my tumbler. The Plasti Dip allows it to not wrinkle or rip and the Rust-Oleum sealer allows it to not fade away. Before I place my design on my tumbler, I dip my finger into my warm water and I place some water on the black border of the design. That way, if that border fades away, I know I did not seal my design properly. If it does fade, then take your design back outside and spray it with a Rust-Oleum and then let it sit for another 15, 20 minutes and it should be good to go. Once you've done that, go ahead and cut away as close as you can to your design, cutting away that border and just making your decal as small as you can and then place your decal into the water for about 30 seconds and then the backing should be removed from the design. I always use warm or hot water. It allows that backing to separate from the design easier and quicker than if using cold water. I always have my tumbler on my craft towel and I have my silicone brush and some paper towels. I wet my tumbler and then I remove that uh, decal or design from the water. And then I place my decal on my tumbler, making sure my tumbler is wet. If your tumbler isn't wet, it's going to be harder to place that design on your tumbler. And then I wet my silicone brush and then I add more water to remove any wrinkles. And then I take a dry napkin and I blot the area, not rubbing too hard, just blotting, just removing any of that excess water and really sticking that design to that tumbler. Once that is on my tumbler, I found some bats that I found on Cricut Design Space and I added some cute bats around the tumbler. I am using the same piece of transfer tape for each bat just to save on some materials and to make the process go a little more quicker. I thought these bats gave this tumbler an even cuter look, so I was really excited when I found these bats and decided to place them all over the tumbler. And once all my cute bats were added to my tumbler, I went in with my quick coat from CC DIY and I applied a little bit of quick coat to every single bat. You do not have to add this to your water slide decal. This quick coat allows your vinyl to stick to the tumbler so you don't have to worry about your vinyl lifting whenever you go to epoxy over your tumbler. Let that dry for about 15 to 20 minutes before moving on to epoxying your tumbler. 
I went in with my epoxy. I epoxied my tumbler using 10 milliliters of epoxy. That's five mLs part A and five mLs part B. I then let my tumbler spin on the cup turner. I let my epoxy cure. And then I went in with another 10 milliliters of epoxy. So I did two epoxy coats for this tumbler before moving on to the next step and cleaning up the inside of my tumbler. Once the final coat of epoxy was cured on my tumbler, I went in for a final time with my X-Acto knife and I cut all that excess epoxy and paint. And then I washed out the inside of my tumbler before my tumbler was ready to go. And here is the final butte. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. And if you did, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more tumbler and craft videos. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see y'all next time.